When faced with a patient with reflux symptoms, how we approach it also depends on how severe the symptoms are and how old the patient is. As with all diseases in the digestive system, the older a patient is, the more we would have to exclude serious disease. So for patients who are young and who have typical reflux symptoms, we might try using anti-reflux medication typically an acid inhibitor called a proton pump inhibitor. And these drugs, when given over a week or two, would be like a therapeutic test as to whether it is indeed acid reflux, because if it is, then the patient will report that they feel a lot better. And if the patient does not improve or the symptoms come back again, then we would be prompted to do more tests. The tests we might do to evaluate reflux symptoms include blood tests, may include some imaging, such as an ultrasound or even a CT scan, depending on the symptoms, or an MRI, but could certainly include gastroscopy, which is an endoscopic examination of the upper digestive system. This is the most direct way in which we can look at the lining of the esophagus to see whether or not there is evidence of inflammation or erosions or ulceration, or perhaps even scarring. And we'll be looking for evidence of Barrett's esophagus, which is a kind of cell that develops after prolonged stimulation by acid. And it is a risk of adenocarcinoma, which is a cancer of the lower esophagus. Whether we proceed to gastroscopy in the first instance depends somewhat on the patient profile. If it is a young patient with very typical symptoms of reflux, we might content ourselves with a therapeutic trial of medicines such as with a proton pump inhibitor, which prevents or, or slows down acid production in the stomach. And if the patient gets better, then we can perhaps say, yes, this is most likely due to acid reflux. Some patients don't get better with this treatment. Some patients have symptoms that have quickly come back again. And they, that may prompt us to do further tests, such as a gastroscopy. In slightly older patients, perhaps 45 years and above, where the risk of cancer obviously rises, we may be prompted to do endoscopy alongside the blood and imaging tests much earlier so as to give some reassurance to the patient that nothing seriously is wrong. Whether the patient has non-erosive reflux or erosive esophagitis with or without complications, the medical treatment of this is fairly similar. The key drug is something called a proton pump inhibitor. It reduces acid secretion from the stomach so that the gastric liquid, whatever it is that comes into the esophagus, is not as highly acidic as it used to be. This can certainly cure esophagitis and prevent complications. Another medicine which is often given is a prokinetic drug. This means that it is a medicine that causes the esophagus and the stomach to pump a little bit harder and therefore push acid downwards and reduce the likelihood that acid will come up above the valve into the esophagus. With these two treatments, the majority of patients will become very quickly symptom-free. Many patients ask, have we cured the reflux problem by treating them with these medicines? The answer, unfortunately, is perhaps not. Because, as I explained earlier, the fundamental problem may be a weakness of the valve between the esophagus and the stomach. And this defect is not altered by medicines. What we have done is to reduce acid production and increase the pumping of acidic stomach contents downwards so that what reflux does take place is minimized. And what reflux does take place is very low in acid content. But we cannot, by medical means, tighten that valve. Are there ways of tightening the valve? There are. The most established method is surgery. There is a procedure called Nissen fundoplication, which can be either done by an open surgical uh, technique or a, a laparoscopic technique, whereby a cuff of the stomach at the upper end is wound round the lower esophagus and stitched so that it increases the pressure on the esophageal sphincter. But this is major surgery under general anesthesia. And for patients who have reflux that is not very severe, who can be controlled in terms of symptoms, 
and whose esophagitis can be um, cured by means of medical treatment, we would not generally recommend that patients undergo surgical procedures because the risk-benefit ratio does not favour going for surgery. Of course, if patients persist in having reflux, it is possible that they may need maintenance reflux treatment over a period of time, or even indefinitely, in order to feel comfortable. If patients are agreeable to this, that is not a problem. Some patients, for their own, for their own preferences, simply refuse to take long-term medications and may opt for surgery.